Welcome to today's webinar, Going Digital, How Well Prepared Is Your Business for Long-Term Success? If you, uh, if anyone joined, well, I'll have to say it later on, because obviously if you haven't joined, you won't know that it's being recorded, but I will recap on that later. I'm Justine Gonshaw, Head of Marketing at Mag Labs, and I'm going to talk about digital transformation. Um, and that um, includes whether you're digitizing part or all of your, your marketing, and it might go beyond. And then Donna Dyer, our amazing uh, senior account manager, is going to uh, talk about some case studies. She's going to talk you through uh, where we've um, digitized um, processes for, uh, for our clients and uh, essentially made their, their lives easier. Okay, so let's start with, uh, with going digital and what that, what that might mean for your business. Essentially, it probably means something different um, depending on what stage you're, you're at with your business. Um, you, might have, um, you might have been building um, an online presence over the past couple of years. Um, so you've got some or all of your processes online. Um, you might have had to have moved um, some, some elements of your business online uh, due to the pandemic and it was all a bit of a rush and uh, you didn't go through the, the process you would have liked to have gone through. Um, or you've been thinking about moving your, your processes or a, a number of your processes online over the past couple of years because of um, customer behaviour and, um, and because of the feedback they've given you that they, they want to see and be able to do more online. So there's a there's whole uh, range of things that it could mean for you and you might be, um, you might all be at different stages. And um, that's not a problem. Uh, we can help you with that. Um, um, you can clearly um, help yourselves with that. Um, but you need to understand where you're at and, and what you want to achieve um, before you can actually plan to do anything, uh, do anything more. Because otherwise, just like the rush you probably made to, uh, to get some of your processes online during the pandemic, um, you're probably thinking about thinking now, how can I do it better? How can I improve some of those processes? Smaller, um, newer businesses, uh, maybe startups, um, maybe businesses that are completely um, online uh, with very little um, um, offline, uh, are probably going to find um, sort of the whole um, improving your digital, um, adding more processes um, easier than, than sort of bigger bricks and mortar traditional businesses um, who have only got a few bits and pieces online. And um, that, that's not necessarily the case because I have to say I've worked for consultancies who have bits and pieces online, portals online, um, and I have to say their marketing processes um, would be impressive, that the number of processes would be impressive to some of the, the larger corporates I've worked with. So being newer and smaller doesn't necessarily mean you have less processes, but it should mean you have less processes which means that um, if you haven't um, created um, an effective digital um, channel or channels um, to date, that it should be easier to do that, it should be easier to, to plan and do that. It doesn't mean that um, you, you should you know, do less research um, and plan it um, any less carefully or consider the execution um, in a less meaningful way. That the way you do it should still be the same. It should still be should still be very orderly. Should be thought through. Should be researched. But uh, but you're likely to be to have a, a slightly easier journey. And most people sort of dip their toe in the water. If you haven't done an awful lot digitally in the past, you're probably going to want to dip your toe in the water. Have a have a plan on what you want to achieve, but dip your toe in the water to to see how effective you can be uh, when you when you initially get going. Whatever path you're on, this is going to be an ongoing journey. You know, marketing and digital and digital channels are evolving. They're changing all the time. So what you have now is, um, is, is just a beginning um, or it's already an evolution. You're going to have to continue reviewing and evolving. So you need some sort of plan for that. So how to start? Let, let's imagine, you know, I, you're, you're somewhere, you have something online, maybe not everything online. So how to start? You need to have a digital transformation plan. And that's a strategic long-term plan 
that looks at the, uh, the entire path, where you are now, and it maps out where you want to get to um, an, an end goal, if you like. You can't be too ambitious even with that end goal, but, but you do need to have um, an end point. And you're obviously going to review and, um, and evolve that plan. Uh, but it's not going to be reviewed as regularly as your, your digital marketing plan because a digital transformation plan is something that's long term. Digital marketing plan is, a, um, is like a, a program plan. It's a program of activity and you're going to review that either quarterly and definitely annually. Whereas a digital transformation plan you're going to dip in and out of and you might want to look at it more thoroughly every couple of years. And the purpose of your digital transformation plan is to define how you're going to compete more effectively through digital marketing. It's going to have a larger scope, it's going to be more encompassing, whereas your actual plan, your program of activities is going to be quite, it's going to be a step by step. It's going to tell you what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, how you're going to measure it, so that you know at the end how you've been effective. Whereas your digital marketing plan is your roadmap. It's essentially your roadmap. Okay. Now let's just recap once again, because I don't want to confuse anybody, but obviously digital or online marketing is any form of marketing that involves online channels that you use to acquire or retain clients. It includes digital, digital technology and the use of data that you use to target audiences and the way you use um, messaging, way, the way you're able to use more personalized and precise messaging. So you're reaching out and you're having some really meaningful conversations rather than the sort of blanket coverage that, um, that you, you would have seen in the past or you may still be using. At the moment, realistically, even though the pandemic um, affected us all in, uh, in, in, in a quite, um, <laughs> quite enormous way, Selling still probably has some sort of offline processes to it. Even um, sort of wholly online channels sometimes use um, call centers to, to ring to offer um, promotions or um, to, invite, to invite people to a specific online event. Um, however, the, your, the, the journey for your customer might still be, um, that, that first touch point might still be in a, a retail outlet. So we've probably still got quite a mix of activities going on. However, for some companies, um, the aim, um, and if you've achieved it brilliant, the aim would be to, um, to target people completely using digital processes, digital campaigns. Okay. So starting out on your path to digital transformation, um, it offers a huge range of opportunities, but it also offers you a range of challenges as a business. While it's a great opportunity to review and think through um, all your processes, and I'm talking about more than marketing processes, because marketing interacts with HR, um, with, with finance, and um, often with the supply chain when you're delivering items. Um, you also need to think about people, and you need to create a plan, a genuinely um, useful plan, you know, not a you know, pie in the sky, <laughs> sort of blue sky thinking plan, but a, a sensible grounded plan for how you would like things to work better, better in the future. Okay, so here are some top tips. Review your current processes. And it's not just, as I said, it's not just marketing. You know, if you're taking your whole business um, digital, then you're going to have to, it's a wider, bigger, a bigger process. But I'm thinking about marketing and how it interacts with, with the rest of the business. Review your processes. What works at the moment? What works really well? What doesn't? What could be better? And what will work online? Could marketing process be streamlined? You know, are you doing a lot of stuff you don't need to that's not you know, genuinely adding value? And how do you know that? You know, survey clients if you need to. Could your processes and your could your processes be slimmed down somewhat? And that doesn't mean you need a smaller team. If you've got more focus and you know you're trying to achieve um, a specific set of goals, you might want to focus your team on achieving those goals and make them more focused, make them more effective. 
It might even make them more determined. Then do your research and get advice. Speak to different suppliers. Ask your suppliers if you can speak to their customers. Find out what went well for them. Ask them about the lessons learned. You'll get a lot of useful advice from that. Were they trying to achieve the same goals as you? Did they get there? Ask all the right questions. Have a list of questions, have conversations, and actually spend time, spend time on your research. It will pay dividends. You'll actually work out whether you've got the right supplier that you've committed to once you get to that point and, um, and whether they're going to be a good partner to work with. You also need to have some really clear goals so you understand what you're trying to achieve. Don't be told what you want. Investigate, understand what you want and tell your supplier what you want. Be clear. And don't try everything at once or you'll just simply be overwhelmed. You know, pick some, some, some clear wins, things that are going to be a win for your business, things that are going to make a real difference to your clients and your customers and do those things and do them well and then move on your path, go to the next steps. Once you've done your research and you know that the supplier you'd like to work with, then you can focus on the technology. How can the technology, how will the technology empower your marketing? How will it make you more effective to delivering those messages and those campaigns that you want to get through to your customers and your prospects? And although I've left it to relatively late to bring this in, this whole journey, this whole transformation, although it's to make your life easier and to make you more effective, it should all be based around the user, you know, the, the, your customers and your prospects. You need a much, you, you want to, you want to put them at the heart of it. Now, your research might actually involve some, some customer and um, some customer research. Find out what they think about you, what they like about you, what you do well, what you could do better online. This is a real opportunity for a better, more engaging um, um, commit, um, conversation with your, your customers and your prospects. It's a real opportunity to build, a, to build better loyalty and to uh, create better awareness of your brand. And then like any change program, because digital transformation, even if it's a one process, needs to be led from the top down. Ensure that you've got support from the top and involve the whole business. If you're working with HR and you're working with finance, you're working with the supply chain, get their input, get them involved, communicate with them, talk to them regularly. That way you'll understand what they need to, to get from the, um, from, from the technology and from the solution you're implementing and it will work for them too. They'll feel part of it, they'll share ideas, they'll be excited, but more importantly, share with your team take them on the journey with you if you don't take them on the journey with you then you're going to fi find that they're sort of disenfranchised that they're they may not they may not be on the same journey that you are they may not understand and that can be um that can hamper the whole process and remember you know it's a journey and any change program any project you know anyone's ever worked on unless you've been extraordinarily lucky it you know, allows for extra time. There will be bumps in the road, you know, stuff happens. You're testing and you realize it's not quite what you want. Uh, you want a little change here, you want a little change there and that's going to take an extra little bit of time. So it's a journey, be patient. And then like I said, you know, transformations offer opportunities. You know, going digital gives you more data so you can measure and learn. So you can really understand what's being effective, um, what's working and what's not. And where it's not working, you can, you can change and adapt. It will also show you how to use your people more effectively, particularly if they're focused on, on as I said, if you've streamlined and they're really focused on delivering specific um, projects. Or, or specific campaigns. And it's a great opportunity to, to provide a more engaging and better customer experience end to end. So if you've planned your customer journey, you really understand all the touch points, 
it's a great opportunity for you. And technology gives you a real opportunity to work with your colleagues better and with your internal and external partners. It should make sharing information and campaigns uh, more smooth, more secure, and you can share amendments and all the rest of it more easily. And ideally, technology should allow you to be a more agile business. If a pandemic comes along again, it should help you to, and I'm not suggesting it will, you should be able to change. You should be nimble enough to change because the technology is there um, to help you do that. But obviously, you know, transformations, digital transformation like any change has its pitfalls. You know, don't be led by your supplier, you know, be in the driver's seat, really, really take that role and guide your technology supplier. Don't feel that you have to get something done by a certain date, you set the, uh, the timeline and you drive the, you drive the project. And that way you won't be limited by your technology solution. If you know what you want and you're driving your supplier and you're working with them closely in partnership, as you should be, then you'll find you get what you want and your the end goal will be successful. And if, like I said before, just don't try and move all your current processes online. And if you just take what you've got now and try and you know make it, you know, bring it online, it's going to be clunky and difficult for, for users. And, um, and you're not going to be happy with the end goal. And you're probably going to want, feel like you've wasted a lot of time and a lot of money and, uh, and it's not been, been successful. Communicate, discuss the, the project around the business. And depending on the size of the project would depend on the size of the, uh, the, the amount of discussion, the amount of communication, but certainly within your team, you communicate, discuss, get ideas, get input. The more involved people are, the more likely they are to be excited by the project and the less likely they are to be frustrated or hampered by the project. Ensure that you um, talk to your technology supplier about you know, training. You know, training can be important. If people don't feel like they, they understand what they're doing or that they don't know how to use a the solution, they're not going to be as, as effective as they can be. And you may want ongoing support from your supplier. You know, MagLabs often works with them um, with clients on an ongoing basis, um, supporting them through our help desk, and um, and that gives them the confidence that um, that the, the solution is working for them. And if there are any little bumps in the road, that we're there to to hold their hand. And then also remember, some of your people may need new skills, or they may need, may need training, or it might be a case of talking about how to do things differently just realigning their thinking. But in some cases, you may also need to bring in some new skills to, to help you along with the project. Okay, that's my little bit. I hope I haven't confused anyone with the, the digital transformation and the digital transformation plan, but feel free to ask questions afterwards. As I said, this is being um, recorded and so you can watch it again. I'm going to hand over to, uh, to the amazing Donna now, and she's going to talk about some actual practical case studies. Thank you thanks, very Donna. much, Justine. I'm just going to share my screen. So yeah, thank you for that. That was a really good um, overview of, of digitalising in general. So on my side of things, I'm one of the account managers, so part of my role is to to work with people to, to digitalise them. So I've got some examples of some sort of projects we've worked on and how that's helped um those particular clients so just a note on this we realize that digital transformation while you know is incredibly important and it can really help your business it can also be one of the most challenging things to get your head around it can be quite hard to sell technology into a business you know and it, it can be quite daunting particularly if you've never really used technology before if you're you know if you've got assets on hard drives or if you've got lots and lots of little solutions that you want to combine into one process so you know at maglabs we like to sort of sit and walk you through all the things you've got at the moment and as justine said what currently works what doesn't work what's your goal etc and so yeah we really appreciate that sometimes this is a very scary sort of process to get started with 
So when we're starting any project, no matter how big or how small with a client, whether they're existing with us or whether it's somebody brand new, the first thing we want to know is what's the goal? What's the dream? Um, is it to put everything online in the next 12 months? Is it to make one process simpler, which is going to save time? Is it to save time? Is it to save money? Is it to, you know, what, what's your goal? What do you want to achieve? What, what do you want to look back on in six months and go, I'm so glad we did this because it solved this issue. What is it you want to replace? Are you replacing something manual? Are you replacing three or four different image sharing solutions? Are you replacing an email chain? What is it? And then we can look then and work out what we're replacing and how best to replace that. Who is involved on your side? It is so important to have a stakeholder, a point of contact. That's the person I'm going to be talking to all the way through. The more people you've got, the better. It's a lot of pressure on one person, particularly if it's a big project. Um, but having a single point of contact is always great because that person knows where the process is at, where the process is going. If things look like they might be going you know, a little off course, it can be pulled back in again. But having you know, named team members is brilliant on these projects. And what's your ideal time frame? And by ideal time frame, I mean, what's the dream and then what's achievable? Because they're always two different things. Everybody goes into a project and they think, brilliant, we can have this done in six weeks. But you want to set it for when you need to give yourself some contingency. So you need to think, right, I'd love it in six weeks, but as long as I get it within eight to 10, that's fantastic. So set yourself some time frames or break it up, set it into mini goals. We work agile in this business, so that's two week sprints. So watch your mini goals for each one and we work with you to set those. So we are a digital business, digital marketing, uh, process, uh, et cetera. And so we have lots of different tools within the business. We have enterprise, which is your larger scale project. These are bespoke. Everything we've got, uh, apart from on the digital side, uses AWS tech stack that we've built in-house. So it's Stratum. And it's for enterprise. It's what tools out of that do you want to deploy to your website and what do you want to add into it? So that can be as small or as large as you like. We have our digital team. That's very much your front house agency team. So if you have it on Braco based and if you go onto a front end consumer website, that's very much where they sit within the business. We have Sargasso, which is our off the shelf product. So this is um, a starter dam almost, although that doesn't feel like that's doing it much credit, but it's, if you've never really used a dam before, it's a fantastic place to start and it's expandable. So you start with that and then you might think 12 months down the line, I wish it did this. And because it's on the same tech stack as our enterprise solution, then it can. My brand stream is another fantastic piece of tech, which is all to do with um, process workflows. So your projects, et cetera, packaging, all that sort of thing. So that's like workflow management. And then there's an event manager, which allows you to create and manage events. Think press screenings, think large company dinners where you've got lots of people coming from all different places and you need to manage it. You're sending invites out, red carpets, et cetera. So we've got lots of little solutions that can all help you in all different ways. You know, it's not a one size fits all. So I've got some case studies of not all of those, but of a few of them. And I'll start with Sogasa because it is the ideal introduction to digitizing your business. If you're using WeTransfer, Dropbox, Google Drive, a hard drive and a courier, then this is the next step for you, most likely. It is simple to use. It is built to your company. It's all fully branded for your company. We use metadata tagging. So everything, every asset makes sense. It's a central source of truth for all your digital assets. We've got great tracking on there, the great ability to share, give permissions out to people so they've got limited access but it's all in one place. It's not on somebody's computer. Everybody can log into it and see it. An example we've got of this is NBCU International. So we have a few different systems for Universal. 
Um, but they use an instance of Sargasso as a, almost like a replacement for an FTP. So they have lots of territories localizing different bits for the different films and they upload all of the localized artwork to this platform so everybody at head office can see what's being made within the markets that those assets can then be moved to other platforms where they're going to be shared etc but this allows them to have a, again a central source of truth all the tags you see here on this side are specific to this particular brand if we have a new customer coming on, one of the first things we do is we sit down with, a, with an online Excel sheet and we're like, right, what tags do you need? What's your business do? Right, so how can we put that into metadata and make sense to your customers or to your internal users? Everyone looks different. Obviously, it's the same sort of layout, but we do color schemes and branding that suits the business. So it feels very much part of your business and it's not, you know, here's Mag Labs dealing with this for us. Event Manager um, was an incredibly manual process before we got involved. It was organising events across uh, non-domestics, that's everywhere bar America. And it was take one master Excel sheet, put in all your interviews for all your, um, for all your talent, for all the journalists across the world take a copy of it, send it to each territory. They then email it back and you then have to merge that all together. And then every time a change is made, which is frequent because that's the nature of the business, you've got to make sure you keep updating that Excel sheet. It's very hard to track. It was a lot of paperwork. Um, I had the privilege of going to, to a press junket in which the first thing you notice when you walk in is reams and reams of printouts for managing all of the all of the comings and goings of the day which had very much worked for them but it was taking up a lot of time and obviously if you lose a piece of paper or that particular excel isn't saved or somebody hasn't come back to you you're you're having to spend a lot of time trying to track all of this so they already had a system with us for managing assets which is what's on the site here but they didn't have this and this is an event manager so instead of having to use Excel spreadsheets and printing out lots of paper and hoping for the best, basically, they came to us and said, how can we digitize this? So we've turned it into a workflow. So you go in, head office or whoever's running the event creates the event. They then send invitations to, to the various territories that are involved, the various people that are involved, and they have to fill in set forms. We set the forms in such a way where the data has to be provided, whereas on an Excel, nobody's forcing you to fill in that column. They'll put in who they want to come and, you know, who's going to be taking part. And then that can all be booked in. They can also input flight details, hotel details, if they're going to be going to screenings, if they're going to be doing anything extra, if they're bringing a guest with them. Everything is input into this system and in one place. You have to go into this system to put in that information. There's no getting around it. And everything's exportable. We appreciate that some things do need to be printed out. You know, if you're gonna be walking around checking people in, sometimes a printout is it's comfortable and it's what they're used to. But there is also the option on this for creating a press screening list and checking them in. Everybody who turns up to the event, you can check them in online. It's mobile responsive, so you can do it on the go. You're not always gonna have your laptop with you. And it saved them so much time. And, you know, it's, we've had it for, I think about 18 months now, and it's been a really good success. It's gone through the pandemic as well. Obviously, we're not going to premiers, we're not going to, journalists aren't sitting around a table talking to, um, to talent at the moment. It's all been done online. So they've been using it to organize Zoom screenings and Zoom interviews. And it's, you know, it's, it's fitting beautifully and it's great because, 18 months ago had this happened you just don't know how well that would have worked so so it was you know it came at the right time and it's very much transferable to other types of events as well finally i'm just going to touch on um, a bit of a digital transformation that we've done so we have an online sales presenter tools this is all built in on braco and this allows 
the sales teams to go in and create a PDF sales document. So let's say you're going in to pitch the selling of some kids' films. On this system is lots of the kids' film thumbnails, the synopsis, the release dates for that particular territory, etc. You go in and add them to your basket, and it creates a standardised sales tool, a sales presentation that can be either printed off or, or downloaded to be shared on a on a screen. And it's very much keeping them on brand. When whilst the the presentations being done by sales teams are fantastic. You want to make sure that they all look the same. It's your brand. You want to make sure it's the right colours, it's the right format, that you're saying the right things about, you know, about what it is you're trying to sell. And this tool allows them to do that. You know, they're not going to go awry because everybody's getting the same. They're just picking and choosing what goes on. It's another time saving solution. Manually creating, or even if it's just editing an existing presentation, it takes time going in and adding four or five titles to your basket, clicking download presentation saves a lot of time. So, so yeah, that's just a few little case studies about what we've uh, what we've done with MagLabs. Obviously, this is just a snapshot. Um, we've got other users on Sogasso users for different reasons. We've got other bespoke tools that do everything from just allowing their clients to download to watermarking, and localizing materials, subtitling them, et cetera. So, so yeah, but this is just a little snapshot of, of some of the things that we've done. Okay, thanks, Donna. Now we've also obviously got uh, portals that we build for, for people who, for businesses that want to um, deal with their supplier, share with their suppliers. So there, there's, there's so many different um, aspects to, um, to what you, you might want to, to digitize or um, consolidate in some cases. I've got a couple of questions. Um, are there any common problems that clients struggle with during a project? You want to answer this, Donna? Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> times, timelines. And it's very much on us as it is on them. We all go in with the dream of, right, if everything goes perfectly, then this will be done by then and this will be done by then, etc. And then obviously you reiterate that to a client and it's really exciting. You expect everything to be there then. And sometimes there are bumps in the road and tech doesn't quite go the way you want it to. And it's, it's down to us really to manage expectations, but also making sure the client understands that these things do, do happen. So sometimes timeframes can be a little, a little tricky uh, in a project. That and knowing where to start you, they, you always, when it's exciting when a project starts, you've got all these ideas and they're like, right, we want this to happen now. Whereas there's sometimes a logical way of doing things. So it's, yeah, again, it's, it's very much that supplier client management, you know, making sure we're all on the same page. I, I've been the overexcitable client many times and, <laughs> and a supplier, I prefer a supplier who's honest, who will say, you know, this is a more realistic time frame than the one that promises and doesn't deliver because, mm -hmm. It, it's, it ends up you know being frustrating so i think it's very much understanding that it is a, a, a two-way thing mm -hmm. and that you you know if you've got a supplier you can trust you can work with well they're going to tell you the truth they're going to be um honest with you within reason obviously um that you know <laughs> that that you know your timeline the, the timeline you've got in mind is madness it's never going to work mm -hmm. um this is a good one. How regularly do clients change their mind during a project and what impact does that have, Donna? Um, it varies from client to client. Some clients come in, they know exactly what they want and then it stays. But it is very common that people change their minds because when you're building things, sometimes they, you think it's going to work one way, but then actually it works in a different way than you imagined in your head. So sometimes it's good that they change their mind, but the, the impact is always timelines. If we've started building and then they go, oh, no, that's not, oh, that's not what I thought it was going to be. Can we not have that? And can we move it over here? It's unpinning and redoing. And it, you know, it does have a bit of an impact, but you know, sometimes the mind changing is great because it means they're really thinking about how they're going to use their system. And if they spot early that, oh, I thought this is what I was going to do, but now I need to do this, you know, it's it's good for us to know that then for us to deliver something and then to not use it or for it to hinder them rather than help them. Yes, you get a better outcome in the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And we got um, another one. Does Mag Labs ever say no to a project? I, mean, I, I can start with this if you want. Um, yeah. Certainly, certainly we've said, <laughs> certainly we've said no, but we have because we've got flexible technology. We do, we can um, build to order, but it obviously costs. There's a, it costs a little bit more to get exactly what you want. But if we honestly don't think we can deliver, we I, I've been involved in instances where we've said no. I don't know about you. What's I haven't actually. Um, <laughs> I, I will say that we've said maybe we wouldn't do this, but how about this? We don't like saying and nobody likes saying no and nobody likes hearing no so if i am in a position where i think that might not be a good idea before i say that i go and find out what we can do and then present that and it's like okay this is great but that's not going to work the way you think it is so why don't we try this route instead and it's not always well received but it's better than just a flat out no i'd be a person who never had to refuse anything Lucky you. I know. <laughs> I have to say, on the other side of the fence, as someone who's had unrealistic expectations, I've had people tell me no, but uh, well, that's a different story. Um, <laughs> how long do some of those projects that you were talking about take? And I know, you know, it's how long's a piece of string because they're all different. But the average Sargasso setup is anything from two to six weeks. It very much depends on how much metadata there is from the client if they're starting fresh and they're going to upload themselves or if we're going to upload for them, you know, we can use, again, we work agile, so we're going like two weekly. We know it's two weeks to do this and two weeks to do that and two weeks to do the other. So yeah, two to six weeks for a Sargasso. For an enterprise project, it is very much how long is a piece of string. And, you know, you can't anticipate if minds are going to change, if something's going to work the way you want it to. So they can be anything from two to 12 months you know but we'll always try and deliver something they can see if it's going to be an incredibly long time frame if there's going to be lots of parts to it but there's a natural starting point with it that would be usable you know we don't just disappear for 12 months and then come back and go here it is so, so yeah it's a difficult one to answer unfortunately yeah, no, I think that's uh, that's fair enough I think it's better to know that there's you know it depends on your requirements and finally, um, I've got a, a cost one. This is another one. How much does making a, taking a set of processes um, digital cost? And I guess it, again, depends on the requirements. Yeah. It, it is very much, you know, is it existing technology? Is it something we need to build in brand new because it's something that we've not had to do for a client before? Is it off the shelf? Is it off the shelf plus? Is it completely brand new website? It's, you know, it's, it's really hard to sort of pin down a, a fixed cost for each thing that people want. My sargasso starts from about, about seven. So, yeah. about seven. but obviously there are different processes that may not use or involve sargasso. Yes, exactly. But, uh, but we're always upfront about cost. We can always, once we know, understand a requirement, we can then give you an honest um, cost, and then we can obviously talk about. Um, what you want to streamline down from there, I yeah. guess. <laughs> yeah. And any final thoughts, Donna, or any anything final you want to say? No, I don't think so. Just you know, digital projects are terrifying and exciting all in one go. Um, and it's very key that you know when you're going to start that you pick the right supplier, somebody that you 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 know as they need to be professional, but you also need to get on with them because you're going to spend so much of your life talking to them over the period of being built. That having people you can you can trust and you can go to and who will listen to you when you want to talk, you know, is is really important. Is as important as the tech stack that you're you're getting from that company. Yeah, absolutely, and also from my perspective, I think it's putting the customer, the the people that you um you want to appeal to at the end of the day at the heart of this because um it's not going to work for them. You're you're going to be frustrated at the at the end of it. So um so make them central to it and drive drive the project that's yeah. that's a lesson i've learned um, a number of times that's great thanks very much donna thanks for for thank watching everyone it will be um it has been recorded and the recording will be on linkedin at from tomorrow and on our website at maglabs.net uh, thanks very much thank you very much okay